Good morning, and welcome to another exciting episode of Breakfast with Unity. Uh, you can eat and learn Unity at the same time, and if you happen to be somewhere else, it might be dinner with Unity, or lunch with Unity, or I'm asleep, go away with Unity. So, uh, what we're going to be doing is, uh, on our last episode, we created this grid spawner thing, and actually, it turned out pretty cool. Um, when we uh, when we play it, it, it starts slow at first. And we have this force ball that just like sends it flying through through space, and it's really really cool what we set up here. And we can just spawn these, however, and just kick things into the into the sky. It's a lot of fun. Um, so uh, the thing is, um, I was playing around with this, and I realized, you know, we have this physics follower thing. We can actually probably do something fancier. So I ended up creating this animation last night. Um, I've got it on my website here. Uh, you can also find it, um, I don't know, it's on like GIF something, GFY cats or something. So um, so yeah, it's just this uh, looping animation of these cubes coming back together. And I made it so that it was seamless and it was actually pretty easy to set this up. And um, I'm using some, uh, some pro effects here in a pack called Sonic Ether. I really like it. It, it, it requires pro because it's post effect. Um, so I I have included in here. I can actually show you this thing running real time. I didn't have to like pre render this or anything. Um, we can go into uh, I created this folder called bonus and it's called cube deconstructed. And if actually sorry, it's in Sonic Ether and Pro required cube deconstructed. Uh, so if we hit play here. This is this is the setup I had, and it doesn't automatically spawn the physics balls things. It's uh, wait, this is spawning the wrong type of ball. Let me fix that. This should be using. Oh, did I not split out the force ball? I didn't. Duplicate. Put this in here. We're gonna call this. Uh, big force ball and we're going to change it so that it has a radius of like I don't know 15 is that what I used um, oh we need to actually use it pull out grid spawn uh, main camera force ball big force ball sorry I was trying to keep everything so that each version of it worked so yeah, this is uh that's basically what I did there. Um so this is uh so you can see the ball right now and that's because I had turned off the ball. All I did was I just turned off the renderer on it. So if we just get rid of the mesh renderer here and hit play, it looks like the the cubes are moving on their own. And then they're coming back into their position. I'll show you how I set that up. If you don't have Pro or don't have Sonic Ether. Um I've created a version here called Cube Deconstructed. So this is the Cube Deconstructed Sonic Ether Pro. If you have if you have these things, just go into main camera and make sure that SE Natural Bloom and Dirty Lens are on it, and then go into um, the uh, cube here and make sure it's using the Sonic Ether Emissive Textured uh, Shader. Those are the only two settings that you'll have to make sure because this folder because I can't distribute this. This is uh, something that I paid for on the on the asset store. But if you have it, you can get this set up. Um, but I also created a version called uh, Cube Deconstructed. This one works on Unity Basic, and it still looks cool. I decided to make it all reflective and stuff because I could, um, and I couldn't do the like Bloom stuff. So this one is same same concept, although I'm going to, again, fix the big force ball. Big force ball. We're going to hit play. And so... This one like scintillates and stuff, and so this one's still really cool. And this one, you you only need do. Uh, yeah. So um, so let's actually look at what I did and what I was playing with to actually make this stuff happen. So so let's create a new folder. We're gonna call it ten, um, and I'm gonna call it uh, reconstructed. The other scenes I just told you about were in the bonus folder because we didn't actually have an episode on them, although we kind of have now but we didn't build anything. So so I'm going to just uh, make a duplication of our grid spawner level. Duplicate. We're going to put it into cube reconstructed. And uh, I'm going to hit, uh, we're going to open it up. Actually, I'm going to rename it to cube reconstructed. Save. 
And so this should be exactly the way we left it. So it runs really slow. So first of all, we can actually solve the running real slow at the start. Um, I found that this works really effectively. If we just put like 0, 1 at the end, so that there's a little bit of space between everything, it allows them to just breathe a little. And if we hit play now, you'll see that they'll uh, they'll stand here and it doesn't take nearly as much CPU time, so that's cool. Um, so that's one little optimization you can do. The reason that it took up so much before is because all of them are touching a little bit, and so it does all these calculations for the collisions, and that slows down the game. So um, we're going to um, change out some stuff here. So what we want to do is um, we want this... Uh, this grid spawner, we want this to set up to uh, spawn something where the cubes come back. And so how I set this up was um, we had already done physics follower here. And so what we did was um, if we if we go to our cube, I'm going to show you what we've got here. I'm going to create a duplicate of the cube that we're spawning. We're going to put it in here and I'm going to call this, uh, just call it cube again, that's fine. And we're going to put it in there. I guess I didn't need to make it to duplicate because I'm going to have to create a new prefab anyway. So this is just our cube. It's just a little physics object. So what I did is I created an empty game object. I set the cube to 0, 0, 0, and the empty game object to 0, 0, 0, just so that they end up in the same place. And then we put the cube as a child. So if we go here, we can see our cubes at 0, 0, 0. And now we can move this around, and we've got a child moving with it. And the child at 0, 0, 0. Perfect. So... What this game object is going to be is the cube target. So we're going to now create a prefab of this, and I can delete this one now, we don't need that. And um, what we're going to do now is in the cube, we're going to add our physics follower script. So we're just going to follow position physics, we're going to put this on the cube, and we're going to follow rotation physics, we're going to put this on the cube. And then in both cases, we're going to give its parent, the cube target, into the target here. You probably know where I'm going with this now. So um, now if we hit apply, that saves it to the prefab and we can delete it from the scene. And if we go to grid spawner and we change it to spawn the, um, the new cube target rather than cube, if we hit play, you'll see that when we throw this ball, it actually tries to reassemble itself. This is actually kind of a cool effect too. Like, uh, like this is this is not what what I showed you earlier, but uh, but it's also very interesting in and of itself. Now, the reason it's having trouble here is because we actually have collisions still enabled on all of the cubes. So if you want, if it, this is still really cool to play with, and I recommend that you do. Um, but uh, but if we want this to actually look a little bit more spectacular we can um, make it so the cubes don't collide with each other. So I'm going to create a, we're going to go to project settings and I'm going to use uh, physics. And we're going to create a, uh, sorry, that's not what I wanted. I'm going to go to our cube target. Wait, why is there a cube target in the scene? That's weird. Hold on, if I hit play and still work. Yeah, I don't, I don't get that. So. What uh, we're going to do is, um, lost my train of thought with that. We need to change the collision, that's right. So we go to cube target, we go to the cube, we change this layer, and we're going to add a layer. And this layer is going to be called uh, no collision, is what I'm going to call it. And we're just going to make it fully, we don't care about any colliding. So we're going to go to physics. And on no collision, I'm just going to turn off everything. So now if we hit play, they're still colliding. And that's because we didn't actually change their layer. We need to actually make sure that on the cube, we created a new layer, but we didn't actually add them to it. So if we do no collision, now it's going to look really weird because they're all going to fall into each other. Oh, they didn't. That's weird. Oh yeah, that's because they're trying to be in their positions. So now you can see that they uh, they reassemble a lot more readily now. Um, we've got the rotation doesn't have enough gain on it right now, so it's not going to rotate into position, and it might actually not actually get to the final position. But it still kind of looks cool because it kind of heals slowly. Um, you can tweak all these values to make it interesting. So so let's uh, make the follow rotation physics. Let's let's do fifteen on the gain and see how that does for our rotations. So if we hit play now. There we go. 
and you can see that they're reassembling much faster. You'd probably go higher, like 50. Might be able to tweak some of the other values too to make them move in faster, but let's see how that looks. That might be too much. Let's do 15 and max velocity 30 and 2 velocity 5 and max force 80. Let's just play. There we go. Now they seal up real nice. And then the way I made them explode so much more spectacularly was just actually changing the way that the force ball worked. So I'm going to duplicate the force ball now, put this over here. Um, we're going to call this big force ball. And this big force ball, we're going to uh, just change it so that it has a huge radius. So let's just make it like 15 radius. And hit play. And then that's not big enough. Oh, it's not big enough because we didn't actually spawn that. So we got to go to our game object here, and we want to spawn big force ball. Actually, on this scene, we don't need this camera. I'm going to save that real quick and also fix that on the grid spawner scene because it keeps complaining about the audio listeners. That's just because we have a camera on the first-person controller already. So I'm going to go back to Cube Reconstructed. We're going to go play, play. There we go, and you can see that it now looks really wild when we blow it open and we can like hit it with multiple balls to change kind of how it disperses, disperses and reassembles. And uh, all this is very cool. Um, so I didn't actually try this one yet, but I'm going to try it right now because I thought that it would be very cool. Um, I uh, want to do one more test, except for we're going to make it, and we're going to call this uh, stationary, stationary force ball. And um, we're going to um, get rid of the move forward on this. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this scene. Uh, and we're going to call this uh, Force Aura. And uh, on this one, we're going to open it up. And what we're going to do is, um, instead of spawning these Force Balls, um, I'm just going to remove this capability. Oh, let's just disable it, whatever. You might want to be able you know, let's just leave it on. And uh, we're going to also, though, put a stationary force ball on the main camera here. We're going to put it at 0, 0, 0, so it's right in your face. And um, you're not going to be able to see it because we're inside of it anyway, but I'm going to turn it off the mesh render because of that. So we're going to hit play. And so now, if we walk forward, the cubes will move away from us automatically and then reform behind us. That's pretty cool. Let's make the radius a little bit smaller on this so that it uh, so that it looks a little bit more like it's our force, not just a force. So I'm going to do radius of 4 here and let's see how this looks. Maybe it'll look better when I walk backwards. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to walk backwards. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Too small, a little bit bigger. Let's try. Let's try ten. Stuff to play with. Yeah, so you can like create things that automatically open and reassemble for you when you walk through. Now, isn't that nifty? So I'm gonna save that. Save project, and uh, thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions, please email me, pushypixels at pushypixels.com. You can also tweet me at Drakfire. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the program. Um, uh, please tune in next time. So uh, I'm going to be on a trip next week, so might not be doing the show. Um, uh, I'm going to try to do the morning episodes on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, but I can't promise that I can do them because I'm out of town. Um, I'm almost certainly not doing the Monday night show just because I'm out of town and I usually like to have uh, co-op on the uh, on the bigger programs because it's nice. So, and since my uh, buddies from Bend will not be with me in in San Francisco when I'm visiting, um, I uh, 
won't, uh, I basically, I'd want to save it for them. So, anyway, you guys have a great one, and I'll catch you when I catch you, either Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday next week, whenever I can. Have a good one, and have a uh, great weekend.